Close your eyes and imagine this. Police, open up now! In the 1940s, this was a common occurrence at the homes of Jewish families. At all hours of the day, Jews could be questioned and forced to leave their home with only a small suitcase. All of their other belongings were left behind. They were unaware of their destination and their fate. They were not given the basic necessities of life like food, water, and shelter. Their human rights were denied. In the novel, Sarah's Key, the author, Tatiana Durazne, writes about the life of a young girl during this time period. Interestingly, Razne alternates between the past and the present in order to bring the story to life. The book begins in Paris in July of 1942. The police are banging on the door of the Starzinski family home. They are a family of four. A mother, father, a son named Michael, and a daughter named Sarah. Sarah is the first to be awoken by the French police. As her brother continues to sleep, she frantically calls for her mom. In the beginning of the story, Sarah was a timid, curious, naive ten-year-old girl. She frequently depended on others. When her mother opened the door and heard the police say, You are coming with us, your daughter too, she was speechless. After this happened, Sarah went back to Michael's room to wake him up. Since he refused to come with them, she decided to lock him in their secret cupboard to hide. Before she left their room to go back downstairs, she tells Michael, I'll come back for you later, I promise, not knowing that they will be gone for a while. At this moment in the book, Rosne shifts the focus to the present day of May 2002 by introducing Julia Germond and her husband Bertrand Tezak. While Bertrand is more demanding, Julia is more laid back. Julia is an American journalist who married Bertrand, a Frenchman. In the book, Julia gets a call from her boss that she needs to come to the office so she can get a new article topic. Since it was the 16th commemoration of the Val de Hive, Julia was assigned to research and write an article about this topic. When she got home after the meeting, she began to research and found out that there have been over 4,000 Jewish children penned in the Val de Hive aged between 2 to 12. Most of the children were French, born in France. None of them came back from Auschwitz. As the reader starts to understand the present side of the story, Rosne decides to travel back in time. Currently, Sarah, her mother, and her father, who came out from hiding, were contained with all the Jews in the stadium, without Michael. They were not given food, water, or fresh air. They were locked in there for endless days. During this time, Sarah had so many questions roaming around in her mind that had no answers. Like, why were we here? How long are we going to stay here? Why? What was going to happen to them, to her family, to this mass of people? Sarah was also timid. She depended on her parents during this time. In the stadium, she ran into a boy she knew who was trying to escape. But she felt too small, too vulnerable to do anything like this alone. She was too frightened. Julia is also frightened. She has been researching nonstop and is appalled with her findings. Later that night, she went to her friend's house to have dinner. Her friends also invited a man named Gallium. He happened to know a lot about the Val de Hive Roundup. His grandma was 15 during that time and was left alone since they took the rest of her family. Julia gave her phone number to Gallium, who had promised to call her. She wanted to reach out to his grandma in order to get more rich information about the roundup. Why was this happening to her? 
What had she done, or her parents done, to deserve this? Why was being Jewish so dreadful? Why were Jews being treated like this? More and more questions were swarming through Sarah's mind while she was trapped in hell. The thought of her brother made her cry. She wanted him by her side, not locked in the cupboard. Was he okay? Hungry? Alive? She had no idea what to think. But as she felt the key in her pocket that locked him in the cupboard, she thought, I'll find a way to go back and save him. I'll find a way. One morning, they were ordered to line up at the entrance of the stadium. The naive girl continued to ask questions. Could they be going home at last? Was this the end? Was it over? Would she be able to go home and free her brother? They all loaded in buses and were shipped to the tra train station. As they boarded the train, Sarah realized that she was no longer a happy, ten-year-old girl. She was someone much older. Nothing would ever be the same again. At this moment, she was proud of who she was. Later that night, Julia had her daily argument with Bertrand. He questioned whether or not she should continue writing this article, saying that it is the past and is not something that most people want to read about. These arguments and his bossiness made Julia question their relationship. Why hadn't they told him to go to hell? Why did I put up with him again and again? But right when she started thinking of the negative things he does, she began thinking of how charming and handsome he is. She thought of the time they first met. After doing more research about the roundup, she decided to go to bed. The next day, she visited where Val de Hive once stood to take notes. She discussed the event with the cameraman and answered some of his questions. Once they were done sightseeing, they got a snack at a coffee shop. The waiter informed them that some Jewish families periodically stopped in. He also told them that there is a woman who lived down the street who witnessed the roundup. The train stopped. Sarah and her family stepped off and made their way through the barbed wire gates. This is when Sarah and her mother were separated from her father. Julia made her way to the old lady's home. They began talking about the Val de Hive roundup. The old woman remembered everything like it was yesterday. She recalled the children's cries. One night, the police shouted out orders to line up. They had to give them all their jewelry and money. They also got their head shaved. They then lined up and the police forced the parents to let go of their children. The screams could be heard from the nearby towns. Once all the children were alone, they began boarding the mothers onto the bus. When the children were left, Sarah made a friend named Rachel. Now that she's more brave, they came up with an escape plan. As they crawled through the grass up to the fence that was broken, the policeman grabbed Sarah's foot. She looked into his eyes and told him her story. She, he let her let them go and gave them a lot of cash. He warned them to be careful and take off their stars. They ran as fast as they could through the field without looking back. Julia shared all the information she found when she visited her grandma-in-law, Mame. She asked her questions about her old apartment, like, who lived in it before her? How did you find it? And was it hard to find? Usually, she had to process the questions and then answer it. But when she was asked about her apartment, she knew the answers right away. In an anxious voice, Mame said that they moved into the apartment of a Jewish family after they were arrested. But she said she knew nothing about the family. Once she was done talking to Mame, she went back home. The same day she was trying to figure out why Mame was so anxious, she found out she was pregnant. Sarah and Rachel had been walking for days. They finally made it to a house. They noticed that there was a dog house, so they decided to sleep in it. 
Before they could go to sleep, a couple walked out of the door. The couple, Genevieve and Jules Dufal, knew that those children were from the concentration camps. They led the kids in their house and gave them food and clean clothes. The next morning, Sarah was looking better while Rachel was getting worse. The Dufars decided to call the nearest doctor to come see if Rachel was okay. When the doctor came, they realized that she was a runaway Jew, so they took her back to the camp even though she was going to die. Sarah then told the couple that she had to go back to Paris to save her brother. She would not let anyone stand in her way of her journey back to rescue her brother. The couple didn't want to let Sarah roam around on her own, so they decided to help her get back to Paris. Julia made a reservation at a restaurant to tell Bertrand that she was pregnant. When he got there, she told him the good news, but Bertrand did not think so. He said that they were to too old to take care of children. He said that they would be done if Julia had did not have an abortion. She couldn't believe what he said. A few days later, she continued to research about the Roundup. She met with a man named Levy, who helped her find out who was arrested from Mama's apartment. He read the names. Wydeslaw Starzynski, Rywaka Starzynski, and Sarah Starzynski. She noticed that Sarah's name had no convoy name. Was she still alive? Did she escape from the camp? At this moment in the book, the two stories came together and connected. The readers find out that Sarah's family lived in Mame's apartment. The only question left is, where's Sarah? Sarah's key was a fantastic read. Rosny was able to fabulously execute her ideas. The way she separated the book into two stories was clever, which made the readers more intrigued and connected with the book. By the middle of the story, the two stories led to the same path. In addition to the double story, Rosny also had impeccable imagery and descriptive words throughout the book. When the readers read the book, they they felt the pain that the characters felt. She makes the readers feel as though they are a character in the book, going through the journey alongside the main characters. Since Rosna used powerful imagery, the reader is able to be engaged and captivated by the story. This 293-page novel draws in the readers and teaches them a about events that happened during the Holocaust. When I was younger, my mom read this book and said it was outstanding. Since I was too young to understand the concept, I decided to read it now. This book had four stars and a great review as well. The storyline of the book got my attention. By having two stories in one, I felt that It would give me more detail and help me understand the connections between the two. Aside from the book, there's also a movie that was made. That gives me motivation to read and finish the book before watching the movie. Also, since there was a movie made based off the book, that means that it was a popular read. Sarah's Key is a fictitious story that is based off of events that actually happened during the Holocaust. Rosnay states in the author, author's notes that the characters in the novel are entirely fictitious, but several of the events described are not, especially those that occurred in occupied France during summer of 1942, and in particular the Great Val de Hive Roundup, which took place on July 16, 1942, in the heart of Paris. This story is about and takes place during the time of the Holocaust. In addition to relating to the Holocaust, this book also relates to the human rights violations and the culture of hate. In the story, Sarah's human rights were denied, as well as all the other Jewish people. They were not given food, water, and shelter. Their privacy 
was also taken away when the French police intruded into their homes. This denied them human rights number 12 and 25. Those were only a few that the Jews were denied. Most of the basic human rights were violated during the Holocaust. The Jews were tortured, taken, taken from their homes, and separated from their families. According to the scapegoat theory, if there is an issue in society, then society tends to blame the minority. In this case, the minority was the Jewish population. The society needed someone to blame, so they decided to hate the Jews. This led to the concentration camps and the execution of the Jewish population. As you read Sarah's Key, the characters grow and develop. By the midpoint of the book, Sarah develops a lot. She started off as a timid, naive girl and grew to be a mature, independent survivor. All of the pain she went through made her a stronger person. For example, in the beginning of the book, when she had her parents' support, she was too afraid to escape at the stadium. As time goes on, she becomes less dependent on others and creates a plan to escape the camp. Instead of acting like a little girl, she is now a young woman. Sarah still has a lot of room to develop, so hopefully she becomes even stronger by the end of the book. At the start of the story, Julia didn't want to face reality. Even though Bertrand was bossy and aggressive, Julia would never actually tell him how he, she felt. She would take all the negative comments and could not imagine what life would be like without Bertrand. When she was assigned to write an article about the Val de Hive Roundup, she had to step into reality. She had to learn about all the Jews that were killed and the children that were separated from their families. She had to hear the story about Sarah. All of these situations helped her develop. As she continues to learn more about the Valdehive Roundup and the Holocaust, she will continue to grow. Usually when a book is placed in front of me, I push it away or ignore it. But when I started reading Sarah's Key by Tatiana Derazne, I was hooked. I couldn't put the book down. Razney told two stories that then led to the same path. The first story took place in 1942 when the French police rounded up the Jewish people. The second story is about an American journalist who, lived, who lives in Paris and is assigned to write an article about the Val de Hive roundup. Razney makes the story seem so real by using descriptive words and imagery. I was able to visualize the moments of pain and sorrow. By reading this story, I got to not only visualize, but also learn about what the Jewish people went through. This book is very powerful and extremely sad. Since Razni is telling two stories at once, I was able to sense the pain that each character faces from the two stories. Even though this book is about 300 pages long, it always kept my attention, which made it feel shorter. This book is fantastic and a must read. I now have a new appreciation for reading and hope to find books that are as good as Sarah's Key.